it's Miss Elaine again, and I am hopefully on the right page today. Um, I posted our Monday class accidentally on my personal page, uh, my personal Facebook page. So I did a Facebook live stream as me on my page. So um, I did share it here on the Firehouse Art Center page, but I apologize if you were looking for it and you could not locate it. But the reason was is um, there were some technical difficulties, uh, which was basically me trying to get used to um, homeschooling the kids. It got a little crazy yesterday, so I apologize, uh, but we're here on the right page today. Uh, so you're here on Firehouse Art Center's Facebook page. And today we are going to be doing some fun drawings. Now I, I realize I'm on a little bit early, but I just wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure I was on the right page before I started posting because I made that mistake yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to get started until uh, 1, which it is now, but uh, you don't have to start exactly at 1. I just wanted to show you because this is really cute what you can do with these. So not only are they hidden surprise drawings, but they can also be Puppets. So that's what we're going to be making today. And it is in honor of our Press and Fold exhibit, which is in our gallery. And obviously our gallery is closed right now, so nobody can go see it. But we wanted to do some art projects that related to the exhibit in some way. And um, as you can see, this little guy is pressed and folded. So he fits perfectly with the gallery exhibit. So we're gonna learn how to do these guys today. And um, they're really super simple and they don't take that many supplies. So it's probably something that you have in your house already. Um, I'm just using printer paper. I have taken my kids uh, colored pencil box and taken a whole bunch of colored pencils from their box and I have a sharpie but you guys can use any normal marker and I might have to uh, go through Ethan's marker box and grab some of his markers as well and just a, a pencil so that's really all you need for this project so it's super duper simple and I'm going to show you uh, a whole bunch of different ways to do it. And then you guys can have fun and just think of all the different ways you can create hidden surprise drawings as well. So I am gonna turn the screen. Um, if you just joined, once again, I'm Elaine Waterman, Miss Elaine from the Firehouse Art Center. Uh, we're currently closed right now, but we're offering these classes online. So if you have a chance and you can support the Firehouse Art Center at this time, Make sure you go to our website and click on the donate page and donate. We would really appreciate the support and we would love to keep uh, doing these classes for as long as we can or as long as we're closed. Um, we do offer classes at the gallery when we're open, but those are on Saturdays and it's Saturday art experience. But I'm gonna uh, pan this down right here. And there's my workspace. Let me move this so that you can see it. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down and here are some of the samples that I've done. As you can tell, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do this. This one is just a oval. It's an oval and I gave him eyes and your little mouth. And when you open it up, it looks like that. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. This one is an egg. And when I open it up, there's the chick inside. This one is the one that was on the Facebook page, but it says fireworks go boom. There you go. That's right side up for you. And there's that. 
which is a person in profile. So your profile, you see the side of the person. So you see the nose and you only see one eye and one ear and one side of the mouth. And it can open up. It has all these things. It says, hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. See you later. Bye. So these are probably really cool things that you could leave on people's porches while everyone's sheltering in place. It's fun to get notes uh, from your neighbors and even more fun when it contains a surprise like that. So here are some ideas. So there's a person. There's the egg with the chicken side. Fireworks. And the simple oval guy. So I'm going to move these right here. So I'm going to show you how to do this from the very start. Um, and we're going to be able to turn them into puppets as well. So there, just like that. I'm going to move these to the top so you guys don't see them anymore. And I'm going to show you how to create them. So I'm going to start with one piece of paper. Now, to be a, a good recycler, I actually am using a scrap piece of paper that I printed something wrong on one side. So this is going to be where my design is. And it actually helps because it shows you the bad side of the paper. Um, so you'll know like which is which when you see it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of paper and you are going to fold it in half like a taco or a hamburger, depending on how you guys say it. But you're going to fold it in half the short way, just like this. So you see, this is all the type that I have. So this is the bad side of the paper, and this is the side that the drawing is going to be on, so the good side of the paper. Then I'm going to take this top piece, and I'm going to fold it back to the bottom fold. So do you see that? And I'll show you sideways. So that's what it looks like, okay? Then I'm going to turn it over. Once again, there's the bad side. And I'm going to fold it back like this. Now, this fold right here is largely not important. You don't have to do that second fold, um, this one right here, to make it into a zigzag, but it helps in telling where your drawing um, ends. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is what your paper ends up looking like. It's like a, um, it's like an airplane, the start of a paper airplane. Um, so it's folded like this. And you're going to put it on your workspace flat like this. So. You can see that the good sides are up and it has like this fold right here. So if you guys got that. And I'm going to show you a bunch of times because we're going to do a bunch of these. So I am going to start with the most simple one, which is this guy right here. And I realize that my uh, table is reverse from you. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to take my pencil. And all I'm going to do is make a shape for my person. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect oval at all, um, but you're going to draw it with it folded. And you can make it as big as you want, just like that. So you might not be able to see the line. The line might be a little light. So I'm going to go over it with my marker. Now, I'm using a Sharpie. You don't have to. Oh, goodness gracious. It's kind of supposed to follow my line, but I kind of went off it. But that's okay. There's no, no worries. It's not supposed to be exact. So this is what my person looks like right now. Okay. Now, and I can draw it upside down, so that's fine. I'm going to give him eyes. And you can do whatever eyes you want. So you can do this with a marker or you can do it with a pencil. I'm doing it with a marker just so you guys can see 
but you don't have to do it with a marker. You can start with a pencil so that if you make mistakes, you can erase them. And I'm giving the face eyebrows and eyelashes. So I have eyebrows, eyelashes, eyes, and I'm gonna give um, my creature a smile. Now here's the fold right here. I'm actually gonna just trace that line just like that. So you'll see that I've written on the bottom and the top of the fold. So it's kind of like a, I guess if it's an emoji, it's a, the meh face. Um, and then I can give like little cheek marks here. So that's what mine looks like. If I want, I can also put rosy cheeks. But once again, it's just however you wanna do your person. And I'm gonna put a chin. Um, okay, so that is what I've drawn so far. When I open it up, you're gonna see all of this space is completely empty. And it's ready for you to fill in whatever you wanna fill in. So I'm gonna use a pencil at this point just because I don't wanna make a mistake, but I am gonna draw a little bit darker than before. So I'm gonna connect these lines for the top of the head to the bottom of the head and the top of the head over here to the bottom of the head. Now, this is the bottom of his mouth. This is the top of his mouth. When I fold it, you can still see that. So we don't wanna draw on this part or this part anymore. We're only gonna concentrate on this part right now. So I'm going to finish up his mouth and I'm gonna add some teeth on the bottom. So remember, don't draw on this part. So whatever you draw has to be um, above this bottom fold. So I'm drawing his teeth. And you can make them look as pointy and scary as you want. You can really make your face um, however you want to make it. So if you want him to have gaps in his teeth, you can do it like that. Just like that. And I see more people have joined, but let's see, where is everyone from? Hi, Arpita. So if you are joining us, um, just post where you're from if you're from Longmont. Uh, and um, if you're doing the project with us, that would be great. So I'm gonna add arms. So this is my little person coming in for a big hug. Just like that. Then I'm gonna add tongue and what do I want it to say? Do I want it to be eating? Maybe I want it, oh, I'm gonna have it be eating a big old chocolate chip. And then I'm gonna have chocolate chip cookies all broken up. Just like that. So he's a cookie monster. He's eating all the cookies. And let's put another cookie here. So that is what my little monster looks like. And he's very simple, and when you fold it, you just see him like this, and then when you unfold it, rawr. Okay, so now that I've got him penciled in, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put the marker line in. Remember, don't draw on the parts that are here and here. 
because you want to make sure that when you fold it, it still makes sense. So if you started drawing something that like crossed over these lines, it wouldn't make sense anymore. So I'm going to draw the cookie. Give the chocolate chips. And draw his arms. And I have to finish off his mouth. See, I'm, I'm not drawing right there because that was a line that I did initially. I'm going to do his teeth. And get the cookie in here and here. And just like that. Oh wait, I have to get his tongue. There we go. So that is my guy right now. Now, I get to color them in. So hopefully you've gotten your creature created and you can color in with me. I'm gonna make him blue. And we're gonna do a couple of these. Um, so if you guys don't finish coloring them in while we're doing them, you can always color them in afterwards. And make sure you post on the Facebook page because I want to see your hungry monsters and your hidden surprises. So I'm going to keep drawing, keep coloring them in. So how's everyone doing? Uh, is anyone uh, that's watching, is anyone using this as kind of like an art or creative break during schooling? Because I know we are all schooling from home, so hopefully these are a fun break and you guys can do this to supplement uh, the schoolwork that you're doing at home. Okay, so there's my blue guy. I'm gonna give him cheeks. I guess it's he, she, so they. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna do the tongue, maybe a red color. So, the next one we're going to do is going to be a fish. Um, so we're going to try and get a little bit more complex as we go along. And my kiddos are actually home right now too, so if they end up coming into the shot or if they, if you hear them in the background, that's who that is. Um, so I'm going to do... A little bit more brown. So let's see what this looks like for now. I'm gonna fold it back. And that's what that guy looks like. Rawr. See, he says, give me all the cookies. Awesome. I have to finish. Uh, the cookies. So I'm going to do tan color. So you can get a little bit more um, like complex if you wanted to do some shading. 
So obviously this guy is flying through, well, I am not. I guess not obviously, but he is flying through the air. But I'm gonna give him just a little bit of a darker blue down here at the bottom, just for shading and depth. You wanna do that, you can. Or if you don't have a darker blue, you can just color two layers of the same color that you colored your uh, cookie monster. And I'm gonna give him a little bit darker down here at the bottom of his arms. Okay. So I shaded that. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of shading on the cookies too. So if you wanted to do a little bit darker bottom part for the cookie, you can. And right here. And at the bottom of this cookie too. So that just gives it a little bit more depth There we go. So that is our first drawing. So just to go over the steps, I took my piece of paper, I folded it in half. So I'm doing it upside down for me, but it's right side up for you. I folded one side down. Then I flipped it and folded the other side down. Then I unfolded that and turned it back over. So there's a fold here like this. Then I drew my oval for the face. I added the eyes. Then I did a mouth. And then I opened it up and I finished the sides of the body, added the hands, the teeth, the tongue, teeth on the top, and then I added the cookies or whatever he was eating. So that is how we do our first drawing. And you can use this to do all sorts of different drawings. So I'm going to come over here and actually going to get my fish. So if you look right here, you can see I've already kind of sketched it out. But I'm going to draw over it with a darker pencil so that you can see and then I'm going to do the marker. So this is a fish and he's going to end up being a fish eating a worm. So just gonna draw a fish shape with the paper folded. And if you need to know how to fold the page, I can go over that again, but I think everyone saw that from the last one. So that is my fish shape. See that? So it's the body right here. If you wanted to, um, you know, know how to draw how I drew this. I basically drew an oval shape. Or if you wanted to do a simpler fish, it's an oval shape like this. And then you add a triangle at the end. So it's a triangle and then an oval. So that's the simple way of drawing your fish. And you can add triangles for the fins. I'm gonna add eyes. So I'm gonna do this big eye with a little circle inside. Um, and then I'm gonna put circles inside of that for the highlight. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line down here. And this is my fish hook.
So you can get as fancy as you want with your fish hook. So I'm going to get it closer so you guys can see. There's my fish hook and my fish. Okay. And right here I'm going to draw what looks to be a small worm. See? He's tiny right now. Now I'm going to open it up. And once again, there's all this space that I have to fill in. Oh, hi guys. So James and Madeline. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to finish off my fish. You'll see that this part and this part is already drawn. So we don't want to draw anything on here and on here while it's open. But we're going to continue the tail. So it's a gigantic fish now. And we're going to draw his mouth. So I guess this guy is going to be eating that worm. I'm going to give him sharp, jagged, pointy teeth like this. And remember this tiny worm that we drew right here and right here? It's actually a super long worm. And you can draw it however you want it. But I'm going to draw it. So that's one side of the worm. And then the other side is going to come up like this. And I'm going to have it have a scary face because he's about to be eaten. And he's very sad about it. OK, so this is our fish. Now, I'm going to close it up for one reason, because we're going to put stripes. Well, I'm going to put stripes or a pattern on my fish. And I'm closing it up like this. Now, the reason I did that is because I want the pattern to match when it's together. So I'm going to do a pattern of stripes. And remember, a pattern in art is repeated elements, so repeated visual elements. And I'm crossing over this line like this. If you wanted to do scales, you can do a scales pattern. So that kind of looks like this, which is basically waves on its side. OK. And you can put any kind of patterns that you want on his fins. Um, I'm going to leave his tail like that. And I'm going to open it up. Now, you'll see, now I can continue these patterns all the way down. And I know that they will match up because I folded it when I started it. Okay, and you know what? I'm going to do one last one. I'm going to do one right here, and that'll be the end of his tail. So I guess I could do it like this, just like that. So once you have it all penciled in, you may want to do it a little bit darker with a marker and then color it in. So I'm not going to show you coloring in mine because I want to do a couple more samples. But I am going to give it an outline. And I am going to color in his eye. Um, so after I get this outline, then I'm going to fold it back up and you guys can see 
what it looks like. So here's my worm. And I'm going to draw I'm going to fold it up like this so I can finish this part because I want to make sure that I make sure it matches up. Um, okay, so this is my fish. See? So he's just swimming along and he sees the worm and the hook and So he can eat it up like that. So that is another cool idea. So you can make it a fish or any kind of animal. So right now we've got this guy right here, which I guess could be a rock person. Um, so we got the rock person and we've got our fish. And we are gonna move on to, um, let's do, let's do that guy or girl. Okay, so here's my person. I'm going to show you again how to fold it. So hopefully when you guys start making these, you'll realize how much fun they are. And we'll have folded so many pieces, you'll know exactly how to do it. Okay. Fold that back down like that. And then open it up. There we go. So I'm gonna attempt to do this upside down. We're gonna start with the person's head first without the hair. So figure out where you want your person to go, whether you want her to be in the center, him or her, and do a very light oval, okay? And that's just gonna give you kind of like the size and the shape of your head. Okay, there we go. Maybe I'll go a little higher. And then you can do the shape of the shoulders like that. Okay, so not too dark because you're gonna change the shape up. You just wanted to get an idea of the size of your person and the size of the shoulders. So I'm gonna fold this a little bit more so I can see it. Um, you're gonna do first this line for the forehead. It's gonna look like that. Then the nose. And you're going to go all the way down to the fold and that is going to be basically where the top of the lip is. Okay. Then you can make a smile and continue it over the fold. Okay, so you see that? So this is the smile. Um, if you want, you can add lips and teeth. But just do the vertical lines. Don't do like the line where the teeth end. After that, you can add the chin, come in and then do the neck. Just like that. So this is the profile. And a profile is when you can only see the side of somebody's head. So you'll only see one nose, or well, obviously one nose, but you'll only see one eye, and we can draw that right now. And one ear, you'll see the nose, just the side of the nose and the side of the mouth. And that's how we're gonna do the profile. Then we're gonna continue with the head coming over and then down. And draw the neckline and whatever collar you want. And you can draw the shoulders like that. 
and the arms. Okay, now this person right now has no hair, right? So if you want, you can add whatever hair you want to add. Because when you open it up, you are going to have to make up what the hair looks like for an open mouth. Okay, so it's going to look a little strange. This is more kind of like a cartoon character, so it's not going to look terribly realistic. You're going to color over that fold and underneath it. And there, that is what my person looks like in profile. I'm going to open it up and you have all this space right here just like that. So you want to do the whole part of the mouth as it is while it's unfolded. I'm going to put the markers there so that they sit. So what you want to do is you are going to, let's start with the back of the head. You're going to continue the hair. Then you're going to continue the mouth all the way down. Draw the teeth however you want to draw the teeth. And because we did the lines, you have to follow those lines. Make sure you continue them down. And that is my person with a gigantic mouth. You can do the tongue. Just like that. So I'm going to color in the hair. And you can add whatever things that you want that this person is saying. And it just goes to show that you have all sorts of different designs that you can do with hidden surprises. You can do people, you can do animals, you can do things. And that is how I do my person. Okay? So that's one other sample. So we've got a person here opening the mouth. And I move that to the side. So that's what it looks like when it's just folded, when it opens up and she's talking to you. Okay. So as far as things that you can do, so we did animals, we did a little circle monster. This right here, I'm not gonna show you how to draw this one, but basically it's an egg and you can decorate it however you want. So it could be like an Easter egg and get all those lines and all those design lines in. And then when you open it up, that is when you draw your chick coming out. So this is my chick and I have his little feet and I have his wings outspread and I have these lines that I added which indicate motion. So it looks like he's popping out of the egg. So it's egg, chick, egg, chick. So that is another thing that you can do with it. Um, I'm going to do, I think. I'm going to show you these guys. So I already folded these um, and I've gone over the fold a couple of times. So hopefully you guys know by now. Um, but this, and you don't have to draw along with me. I'm just giving you some ideas. Hopefully uh, by the end of the class, you kind of have an idea of what you might want to do, whether it's a person, whether it's the egg, whether it's the bunny rabbit eating carrots, um, and turning that guy into a puppet. Uh, so you get some ideas. So you don't have to draw along with me, I'm just giving you some ideas. And this is a really great project um, for spring. If anyone is studying how seeds grow into plants, 
Um, this is a fun thing to do. So here is my fold. It opens like this. I draw a line right underneath the fold for the ground. And with it folded, I'm going to draw a little stem coming out, a little sprout. And I'm going to draw the roots. So this could be a great project that you can do. You can talk about how the soil nourishes the plant and the root system and then how it grows. So this is the tiny little sprout that comes out. You can talk about the sun and even talk about precipitation and the rain. But this is how the little plant grows and you can make it turn into a big plant. With flowers. If you wanted to, you can talk about the structure of the flower. Um, but it's a fun way to add art into all sorts of lessons. So I'm gonna do the outline here. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like folded and open. You can do the structure of the flower. So this is a bud. Here are talking about pollen, all sorts of things. Um, so there are the leaves. And there's another but that's about to start happening. So that's what it looks like small. And then it grows up. So there are fun ways to use these uh, hidden surprises. Here's another one. I already did one that was kind of like a firework, but you could have this cute little firework guy. And there are lots of ways to use this. So you could have a firework, you could have a box for a birthday present. Um, and when you open it, it could be like a big sign saying happy birthday. So there are different ways that you can do this. And it's just a fun way to hide some hidden surprises in your drawing. Second row. So I know I'm drawing these really fast, um, but you will be able to access this on Facebook. So once the live stream is over, you can still access it um, on the Firehouse Art Center Facebook page. Um, and you can see all the other different designs. Um, I'm gonna fold this like this because I wanna do a stripe design. And I wanna make sure that I connect it correctly, so that's why I did that. So, a little firework. And he's a little worried because he's not gonna he doesn't know what's gonna happen, and then he explodes. So the last one I'm gonna do is um, something that I want you guys to work on.
because a lot of it is personal choice and how you want to draw your own monster. But I'm going to show you how to start. Uh, basically, you do the same fold and you want to draw your monster. And I want you guys to think about um, if he's going to have sharp teeth, is he going to have arms, is he going to have a tail, how many eyes does he have. So it's really about how you want to put together your monster. But I'm going to draw the head of my monster and he's basically going to be a head walking on two legs. And I'm going to give him sharp claws for his feet. And I'm going to give him horns. And these little ears that stick out above his horns, just like that. I'm going to give him a tail. So you think about what kind of monster you want to make. Does yours have a tail? And if so, is it skinny or is it wide? Um, I'm going to give him lots of eyes. I'm just going to do a bunch of circles for eyes. Maybe your monster only has one eye. So it's all up to you. I'm going to do this one closed. I'm going to give him a nose. And that's what my monster looks like right now. So then I'm going to do his mouth. So this is where the fold is, just so you keep in mind where the fold is. And I'm going to give him a tongue. Sticking out of his mouth like that, okay? But I'm not doing the top of the tongue. Just going to have it sticking out like that. You guys see that? When I open him up, I am going to connect his tail. So it looked like a short tail in the first part of the drawing, but it's actually a really long tail. And here, he looks like he doesn't have any arms, but I'm gonna make him have arms. So I'm gonna have his arms out like this, and I'm gonna draw claws. I'm going to connect the sides of his body, give him the same arms here, just like that. So he's going rawr. Anyway, um, I'm going to do his, the top of his mouth, and I'm going to outline it all the way down here to the bottom. And I'm going to give him teeth, sharp, pointy teeth, and sharp, pointy teeth down here too. Now remember, he still has his tongue, so that's his tongue, and the other tooth, and the inside of his mouth, I'm go like that. Okay, so that is, oops, here we go, there we go, now I've got him. That is what my monster looks like extended, and when I close him up, he looks like that. So, closed, open. So these are just some ideas, and I know that I drew them really fast, but I wanted to give you guys uh, a bunch of ideas because you could really take this and make it really simple uh, with just this guy being an oval and then opening up and drawing hands and cookies. Or you can get really complex and do monster with tail and and arms and teeth and all sorts of things. Or you could even do the chick hiding in the egg. 
But there are all sorts of different things that you can do with this. So all sorts of fun ways to incorporate hidden surprises into your drawing with just this simple fold. So it's again the little sprout growing into a flower. You have the person in profile opening up their mouth and the fish eating the worm and if you put a piece of tape onto the back fold you can even turn them into puppets and you can open and close them like this so I am going to post um, pictures of each of these uh, samples that I did on the event page, not on the Firehouse Arts Center page, but on the event page for hidden surprises so that you guys can see samples of each of these so that you guys can work on them um, at your own convenience if you're working on, if you're watching the live stream later. So you guys can still have samples. Um, and hopefully you like the class and you're gonna be able to make them and post your pictures um, either on the event page or on the firehouse page or you can just message me. Um, you can message me at Elaine Waterman on Facebook and I will get those pictures and I will post them to the Firehouse Art Center page because we would love to see what you guys are creating while you're at home. Um, and once again, if you like the class and would like to continue them, there is another one happening on Friday and it is our last art books class. We're going to be doing pop-up art books uh, for kids, so it's going to be super simple. And then the second part of the class, we're going to go into accordion books. Um, and those ones will be a little bit more complex. There's going to be uh, using scissors and possibly X-Acto blades. So that would be for uh, with an adult's help or if you're an older kid and you can use those tools safely. Um, but that's Friday at 1 p.m. and it's pop-up art books and accordion books. Uh, and that's celebrating Mo Print, uh, the month of printmaking, which is actually it's it's over because it was March, but it's for the gallery exhibit that we were having that was called Press and Fold, um, and it's an art book exhibit at the firehouse. So thank you for coming to class. Um, I'll post pictures of these and send me your artwork because I'd love to see it. And I'm gonna flip up the screen so you guys see me. So that was our class for today. Um, let me know what you thought. If you want me to go slower or if you want me to do more step by step, um, I can definitely do that. This one, I just wanted to go through all of the samples because there's so many things that you could do with this project uh, that are really fun and cute. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you want me to go slower and you want me to do more step-by-step, -step, uh, especially for the younger kiddos that are watching, I definitely want to do that. Um, so I hope you had fun. I did, and now I have all of these fun ones to color in, and I will definitely do that, and I'll post them on the Facebook page. So thank you for coming, and I will see you on Friday. Bye!